Jacob Lawrence, Part Two. We're in 1941. The name of this painting is called Two People in a Bar. The name of this painting is called This Harlem from 1943. In Lawrence's earlier paintings, he concentrated on patterns, which helped him see patterns in architectural decorations, window placements, cornices, subway ties, machine parades, and human activities. Patterns also organized and reduced the chaos of his feelings. They brought him under his control, at least some of it. The name of this painting is called The Ironers from 1943. Lawrence has depicted the female workers from several perspectives, that of the primary caretaker of her home, of an employed worker in service to a white family, and a New York garment industry factory worker. This is an average of four bars to every block from 1943. This is called Home Chores from 1945. Lawrence explained his concept of the abstraction process in a 1945 article in an art magazine. He said, and I quote, he said, my work is abstract in a sense of having been designed and composed, but it is not abstract in a sense of not having no human content, end of quote. The most significant changes in Lawrence's war experience were reflected in his inclusion of white people in his work in a sympathetic way, such as the war series completed in 1946 through 1947. In fact, the name of this piece is called War Letter Number no. 6, The Letter. After his discharge, he and his wife went to the Black Mountain College in North Carolina, where Joseph Alberts introduced Lawrence to the Bajas, Bajas stress on design, not only in painting, but other art forms. In painting, Albert demonstrated the dynamic effect of color on shape, form, and spatial relations. When the war ended, Lawrence lost motivation. He had developed his art from his rage over social conditions. His rage diminished due to his success and improved social condition. So his work changed. The war's end brought new situations such as the Harlem Guild didn't exist anymore and Augusta Savage went into isolation. The New Deal was over. This is a piece from 1950 called The Slums. By 1949, he had a nervous collapse and was committed to a New York psychiatric hospital. He could paint in a hospital. He created a series of 11 hospital paintings reflecting the life of patients inside a modern psychiatric institution. The name of this painting is called Depression from 1950. The name of this painting is called Sedation from 1950. He left the hospital much stronger, understanding his abilities with a sense of identity. In 1950, he returned to Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, black community where he lived after the war. His work was less intense, yes, yet broad in subject matter, often depicting moments of pleasure and amusement in the lives of black people. In 1953, he was the first black American artist recognized by the National Institute of Arts and Letters. The name of this piece is called The Q and Ball. So he began to read history books and abandon his exclusive concerns with the lives of black people. He began to paint one of the America's artists' largest historical series ever created, entitled Struggle, from the history of the American people. The series was about the significant moments in the, in the nation's history with expressive compositions, highlighting ordinary people as opposed to national leaders. Lawrence completed 30 paintings for this piece. The inspiration for this particular painting was the pre Jacksonian era of the United States. 
These 30 paintings in the series won high critical praise. In the struggle series, Lawrence dealt with the American experience. Black people appeared in the struggle. The name of this piece is called Struggle from the History of American People, number 13, Victory and Defeat from 1955. The name of this piece is called Struggle from the History of American People, number 10. We crossed the river at McConkie Ferry in 1954. He wrote, and I quote, nine miles above Trenton, the night was excessively severe, which the men bore without the least murmur. Trench Talman, 27th December, 1776, end of quote. The name of this piece is called Struggle from the History of American People, number 15, 1955. He wrote, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, and ensure domestic tranquility, end of quote. After this series, Lawrence didn't paint that, paint that much. He had said everything. He started teaching at Skohagen Art School in 1956. He taught more than he painted. He also taught at the New School for Social, Social Research in New York. The more he painted, the more sophisticated his paintings became. Even with the same subject matter, he abandoned his earlier works, sample, design, and color. This is called Cabinet Maker from 1957. His brother was a cabinet maker. Lawrence wrote during this time, this is what he said, he said, and I quote, he says, my belief is that it's important for an artist to develop an approach and a philosophy about life. If he has developed his philosophy, he does not put paint on canvas. He put himself on canvas. I think the most essential part of the painting is the feeling towards the subject and what the artist wishes to say about it. The name of this painting is called The Visitor from 1959. A little out of focus. This is called the Checker Players from 1961. This is called Taboo from 1963. And yes, it was a taboo in 1963 to marry someone from a different race. This is called Meat Market, and this was created in 1964. However, in 1962, Lawrence was invited to discuss his work and exhibit migrants uh, in Nigeria. He and his wife returned in 1964 for eight months. He created the Nigerian series, which were eight paintings and several drawings. These were free and more complex than his previous works. In the meat market, he used, as you can see, more of a geometric pattern of striped awnings. This is called The Street in Marbira from 1964. During his visit to Nigeria, Lawrence painted The Ordeal of Alice. It's an accumulation of his rage in response to the abuse of black children in the South. Even though it's about the situation in Little Rock where whites harass black children as they try to integrate in the school, also the killing of the black children and the bombing of the churches in Birmingham in 1963, the year that this painting was created. It's called The Ordeal of Alice. In 1969, Lawrence named the paintings Street Orator, Couple, The Seamstress, and In the Garden as some of his paintings that gave him a special retrospective feeling of success. He said, and I quote, at the time of painting, I did not know the things I know now about painting. I wish I could do them today. And I'm surprised, how, I di how did I do this? How did I know this? I wonder how I could have accomplished what I did at the time, not having much of a background, the kind I have now. This always amazes me. In fact, it is very frightening because they were done so early and in the context of what I'm doing right now, where it is difficult not to think of the form. Then I wasn't as much involved with the form as I was with the content. In order to express the content, I had to be involved with the form, of course, but now teaching, having done so much, 
You try to block it out at times because you realize this form can get in the way of other things, things that are mostly involved with the content. The ideal, of course, is to bring forth form and content together so that they become one. I didn't concern myself with these things when I was a youngster. Now I'm very much aware of them. The name of this piece is called the Brooklyn Stoop. And as you can see, this is or was a poster for one of his exhibits in 1967. In 1969, Lawrence left Pratt and the League to teach for six months at the California State College in Hayward. This was a painting he made around that time. It's called Wounded Man. In 1970, a very tired Jacob Lawrence moved from New York to Seattle to rest, paint, and reconnect with his family. He returned to a theme he had dealt with in the 30s. With a renewed interest and pride in how many black Americans were succeeding in jobs as librarians, carpenters, construction workers, electricians, he had a new sense of emotion and direction. The name of this piece is called Munich Olympic Games. 1971. In 1974, he had a retrospective at the Whitney Museum. He created a builder's family painting for the exhibition catalog cover and poster. Most people missed the significance of it. It was a representational piece in an abstract world. You're looking at that design simply called poster design Whitney's exhibition from 1974. The other part that people have missed here is that you have a lot of colored people in this particular painting and not that that's new for Jacob Lawrence but you have two colored people in the back who were doing um, construction work and they're in New York right and then you have a black family dressed up going to the Whitney so this is a very politically charged uh, painting or poster that many people missed. His historical series continued into the 70s. The security of civil rights must be the same as that of religious rights. It consists in one case in the multiplicity of interests and in the other's multiplicity of sect. This was written by James Mason from 1788, and this is what accomplished this piece called In a Free Government that he created in 1978. In 1977, Lawrence was elected a National Academy of Design member. Also, President Jimmy Carter asked him and other famous artists such as Andy Warhol, Robert Rauschenberg, and Roy Lichtenstein to depict his inauguration. Black Art Magazine devoted an issue to his work. Pope Paul VI asked for one of Jacob, Jacob's building paintings as a gift from an American painter for the Vatican collection. When President Carter invited Lawrence and nine other painters to the White House in honor of his paintings protesting discrimination, Lawrence declined the invitation. He said, and I quote, I never use a term protest in connection with my art. They just deal with the social scene. They're how I feel about things. End of quote. This is from 1982, and this is called Eight Builders. This is from 1983, a little out of focus, is People in the Park. This is called Eight Studies for the Book of Genesis, number seven from 18, from 1989. It's, he wrote, God created man and woman. As you can see in his later paintings, he has loosened up his paintings even more. They're almost just these abstract colors moving around. The name of this is called Supermarket all Hollow Eve from 1994. The name of this is called Artists with Tools from 1994. Jacob Lawrence talked about his work. He said, and I quote, he says, my pictures express my life and experience. I paint the things I know about, the things I have experienced. The things I have experienced extend into my national 
racial and class groups. Jacob Lawrence made his transition in the year 2000.